In this video, we're going to talk about using the likelihood ratio test, both for comparing nested models, as well as testing the overall model significance. In an earlier video, we've already introduced the likelihood ratio test for comparing nested models. So we're going to move a bit more quickly through that part and spend a little bit more time on testing overall model significance. We're going to be working with the low birth weight data that we've been using in this series of videos. I've already imported the data and attached it. So for the sake of demonstration, we're going to fit two models. First, I'm going to fit one that uses smoking and race to estimate low birth weight. And I'm going to save that in something called M1. And then we're going to fit another model, M2, that uses smoking, race, and their interaction or effect modification. Let's fit that here. Now we want to test if this effect modification term is statistically significant. The null hypothesis being there's no difference in models, and the alternative that the full model is better. We've seen that to do so, we can use the ANOVA command. We put the reduced model, M1, then the full model, M2, and then test equals LRT to tell it we would like to do the likelihood ratio test. So let's do that here. We can see the change in the residual deviance is fairly small. P-value is larger. The difference in these models is not statistically significant, or in other words, that effect modification or interaction term is not statistically significant. And just a note that rather than using test equals LRT, you can also use CHISQ, capital C, to let R know to do the likelihood ratio test. Now just a quick note I'm going to talk through, I'm not going to enter these commands in R, but we could do this test by ourselves by pulling out some of these parts from the summaries of the models. So if you want, you can take a look at the R code and work your way through how to do that here. Now what we're going to move into is using the likelihood ratio test to test the overall model significance. So this is testing a null hypothesis that all the coefficients in the model are zero versus an alternative that at least one coefficient is not zero. So in some ways this is testing is our model better than nothing. There's a few ways we can do this. First I'm going to show you how we can do it by building the test ourselves and then I'll show you a package we can use in R to get this test. So to do so what I'm going to do is I'm going to compare our model when we'll use model one or M1 that we just fit earlier to a null model. A null model is a model with no variables in it, just an intercept only. And if you recall, that null hypothesis we're testing is that all coefficients are zero. So that is the null model, a model with no coefficients, only an intercept. So let's fit that here. I'm going to call it null model. And we're going to estimate low birth weight, low tilde one. One meaning there's no variables. We're going to have just an intercept only for this model. So let's fit that. And again, just a quick reminder that sometimes the idea of a null model is called an intercept only model. So let's quickly look at this null model to get a feel for exactly what it's doing or what it is. So what I'm going to do is ask for the predicted values from this model. And I'm going to ask for only the first five, just so we don't flood our screen. And if you remember, type equals response is asking our give me the estimated or predicted proportion or probability of low birth weight for each individual. So let's look at that here. The first thing we can see is that for all the individuals, it's estimating the exact same probability of low birth weight, 31.2%. Now let's also remind ourselves of what the proportion or percentage of babies of low birth weight was in our sample. Since I've left low as an integer, I can calculate the mean to get that. If we see that in our sample, 31.2% of babies in our sample were low birth weight. Or we can calculate this by asking for a table of low, right? how many are low birth weight, yes or no and then dividing that by the total number of individuals in our sample. So again, 31.2%, we can see there, low birth weight babies in the sample. So we can see that all the predicted values from this null model are just the proportion of low birth weight babies in our sample. And if you think of why is that? Well, it's because if we have no variables at all, and we have to guess what's the probability of a baby being low birth weight, our best guess is whatever proportion of babies were low birth weight in our sample. Similar to numeric variables, where if you have no information, your best guess is that it's going to be the mean value. So let's compare these two models. Model 1, the model that we fit, and our null model using the likelihood ratio test. So what this test is doing here is we have model 1. This model had smoking and race in it. And we're comparing that to a reduced model, a model with smoking and race dropped from it. So again, testing are the coefficients for smoking and race. All of the coefficients in our model zero. So if we run this test here, we can see as a small p-value, our model is statistically significant. So again, what this means is using smoke and race to estimate low birth weight is better than using nothing. So having a significant model doesn't necessarily mean it's good, 
just means it's better than no model at all. And again, we could do this test by hand if we wanted to, pulling out some of these values from the model summaries. That's in the code here. You can look at that if you want to. I'm not going to spend time on it. What I do want to point out here is we can get the same test done using the RMS package. This is a very useful package. It's regression modeling strategies. So if you don't already have this package, you're going to need to install it using this code here. I already have it installed, so I'm going to load the library for it. And then what we're going to do is fit a logistic regression model. Okay, within this package, to do so, it's LRM, logistic regression model. So we're going to fit a logistic regression model estimating low birth weight using smoke and race. So this is just what we fit earlier, and we called it M1. So I'm going to call it M1 using LRM, using the LRM command. So let's fit that model here. Now I just want to confirm that this fit the exact same model as when I use the GLM command. So what I'm going to do is bind the coefficients from model 1 and the coefficients from model 1 using the LRM command. So we can see all the coefficients are the same. So this just confirmed for us the model we fit using the GLM command in base R and the model we fit using the LRM command from this RMS package are the same model. Now we can get some of this model output by asking for the M1 using LRM. If we enter that here, we can see we're returned a bunch of info. So let's just take a look at that. Similar to using GLM, it gives us the model that we fit here. Down here we get the model coefficients along with our standard error and a test if those coefficients are zero. So this part here looks pretty similar to what we got using the GLM command. But we get some additional info up here. We can see this here, model likelihood ratio test. This is exactly what we were working through just now, testing the overall significance of the model. And you can see the p-value is 0 0.0021. Our model is statistically significant. And if you compare that, that's exactly what we worked out when we fit a null model ourselves. So just recall that p-value, 0 0.0021. And we can see up here when we did it ourselves, 0 0.0021 if we round it. So this gives us the overall test of significance for our model that we just did. We also get these here. These are some R-squared type measures, a topic we're going to talk about in a, another lecture or two. So I'll come back to talking about those then, but we'll use the RMS package to get some of these measures of R-squared. and We'll talk about what some of them are at that point. Now I won't spend too much time on this, but I just wanted to quickly mention we could also use things like AIC or BIC to compare models. We've introduced both of these earlier in the course, and these are other criteria for comparing models. We don't have a test for significance comparing AIC or BIC from models, but one benefit of these is they do not require the models to be nested. To get those, we can just use the AIC command, all capitals, asking for the AIC of model one and the AIC of model two. And recall, lower AIC is the quote unquote better model. So here, Model 1 is a bit better than Model 2. Again, telling us we don't need to include that interaction or effect modification term. Similar conclusion that we reached earlier. And worth pointing out, using the likelihood ratio test or using AIC or BIC to compare models are not always going to come up with the exact same answer. Right? These are slightly different criteria for comparing models. To get the BIC, we can use capital BIC. Let's look at that for Model 1 and Model 2. And again, model one is the better model. We don't need to include that interaction or effect modification term. 